Join us as we search Alaska and beyond for mysterious creatures. Featuring Beans Baxter and Rob Roy Menzies. This is the Alaska Bigfoot Studies. Hey guys, Chuk here from Chuk's Outdoor Adventures. Apologize to the core Bigfoot crew, but we do explore UAPs, UFOs, other phenomenon in this show. So this week I wanted to talk about Lou Elizondo's book, Imminent, which I really enjoyed. And uh, I was very critical of him at first because I had seen his Joe Rogan podcast. And there was a couple things that I didn't like about that. It didn't sit well with me. You know, there's the whole thing where anybody with a long career of military intelligence that is feeding us information about UFOs, we cannot trust if it's coming, you know, from the Pentagon. Of course, we can't trust that, which there is maybe a kernel of truth to that. But after listening to his book, I will say that no matter how hard I try to dislike the guy, I can't. Lou is an awesome guy. So I read his book on Audible. I am going to buy a paper copy, but I recommend that you get the book on Audible too and listen to it because he reads it himself. It's in his own voice and it's about nine hours. Um, there was a couple times where I was working on stuff where I, I wasn't paying attention, but when I was walking the dog and driving for most of the book, I was listening very intently. Um, very powerful there, you know, he talks about some of his loss and you can just hear it in his voice, but just kind of mind blowing hearing it in his voice, reading his own book, but it is called imminent. And he talks about the title. Well, it's not imminent invasion, but maybe he means an imminent disclosure, but I can't dislike him because he basically gave up his career and faced some hardships once he really pursued the disclosure. And thanks to him, he handpicked those three videos, you know, from 2017 and onward, the Tic Tac, um, you know, the Nimitz group videos, the gimbal. And I just remember when those came out, I was so happy. The Pentagon was finally saying, yes, there is something out there in the skies that we cannot explain that does not have the properties of conventional aircraft. So, uh, really interesting but the reason i can't dislike him is because he made some enemies in the pentagon and you know when he started off in military intelligence he's a patriot worked during wartime stuff they went after him during the guantanamo circus and then he made it to the pentagon he was a gs-15 so he would that's a lot of money like when i you know did my contracting stint i wanted to go federal and i i was hoping to be like a gs10 or something to me that's big money he was a gs15 he gave that up um you know that's a major career to give up because he wanted to go for disclosure and um and then they attacked him and they tried to screw him over with his clearances and if they would have succeeded with that then uh, he wouldn't have been able to do contracting work and, and you know, make a decent living. Thankfully, uh, they weren't able to do that. And they, the Pentagon actually admitted he was the director of ATIP. Now, ATIP is the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, unclassified but unpublicized. We didn't even know about it until it was made public December 16th, 2017. This is like the modern blue book. And it gets kind of confusing because then there was OSAP, the Advanced Aerospace Weapon System Application Program, overlapping program whose existence has been known for several years. So ATIP was the name of the overall program. OSAP was the name of the contract that DIA awarded for the production of technical reports under ATIP. So what initially kind of pissed me off with the Joe Rogan interview was, I think Bob Lazar is the ultimate whistleblower, one of the best ones. And what's so amazing about his story is that there's a lot of things that can be corroborated when you talk about the panels that he knew about before they even came out public. And the fact, you know, he, of course, he worked at S4 next to Area 51 on exotic UAP flying saucers, basically. And then he worked at Los Alamos. When the film crew went with him to Los Alamos, staff at Los Alamos were like, oh, hey, Bob, yeah, he worked here, even though, uh, you know, the powers that be tried to erase his record completely. So there's no record of the schooling or working at any of these facilities, yet the staff recognize him. Now, to me, that would be the number one whistleblower uh, 
account to follow up. And during the Joe Rogan interview, uh, but Lou was like, oh yeah, not, yeah, not familiar with Bob. Well, well, I know who he is, but yeah, I don't know anything about that story. And like, even Joe Rogan was like, ah, oh, that's the number one thing he should have been investigating. I agree. He should have, you know, made that his priority investigating that with a tip. Uh, but obviously he didn't, or if he did, he's not saying anything now. Uh, in some concerns, his hands are probably tied. It's a very gray area. You know, he wants to keep his clearances. I did get kind of irritated on the Joe Rogan uh, podcast when he was uh, saying, well, I can't talk about this. I can't give you specifics about this, but I can give you this little tidbit of this story where I could describe a craft and what it looked like and what size it was and how it moved. That wasn't in the book. Um, but like I said, his hands are tied. He uh, can only say so much. And there is the whole thing with, you know, national security. We don't want our adversaries, especially to find out what we have, what we know about. Um, he had some really interesting theories of the science behind these UAPs, how they uh, may bend space and time, you know, where they come from. Oh, sorry. I'm in Squatch land here and hearing strange sounds. Uh, so pretty interesting, and uh, I do recommend y you listen to the book and read it. Um, I do think that there is something to be said for the extreme whistleblowers, like the three guys interviewed by Dr. Greer. Dr. Greer says that Lou called him a terrorist, which <laughs> I don't know, could be true because he's his stories are really wild now he has stories of you know government uh programs where psychopaths are driving ufos around kidnapping people killing people just doing whatever they want um which is his stories are hard to believe but even if there's a one percent kernel of truth there we should be looking into that now what's interesting about the book lou's book imminent there is a couple sentences where he admits that you know government you know military guys, investigators were threatened by uh, contract aerospace companies saying, you know, threatening them for wanting to know about exotic materials and UFOs that we might have. He also talked several times about back engineering could be happening. The U.S., you know, may own exotic materials that are extraterrestrial in origin but none of the a tip files he never said we looked at it we found it they don't know where they are they're they're back behind several layers of secret black op operations that congress is not aware of uh, you know air force in general is not aware of maybe the upper echelons could be but uh really interesting so it's a good start i think that you know what he did to handpick those videos he said that he handpicked them uh the grainiest videos out of like the Tic Tac videos and the gimbal videos so that it could be approved to release to us. So there are videos that are very clear uh, that would be more compelling of these extraterrestrial craft that um, obviously they have um, that they're not letting us see. But it's a good start. Um, right now, it's just up to Congress and the Senate. Um, and there's a lot of opposition to it. There are politicians that are pushing for disclosure and there's a whole bunch that are against it. They're probably being paid off by, you know, these aerospace companies. So uh, it's a good start. It's a really interesting time to be alive in the whole UAP thing. But like I said, I can't dislike Lou because he gave up a, a really good career to go for disclosure, moved to California. He was involved with that project. I really liked the TV show, but that kind of fell through that company. Um, but thankfully he didn't lose his clearances so he can get contract work and, you know, make a living. But I hope he does well with this book. I encourage everyone to get it on Audible and a print copy and uh, really interesting. So like I said, it's a great time to be alive, to be a UAP enthusiast and hopefully in the next few months we hear some more interesting things with these hearings so thanks for tuning in we'll be back to bigfoot next week